Hello, this is Jennifer Martinez. Today I'm going to show you a few examples on how to graph parabolas. Our first example is the most basic. Example 1, let's graph y equals x squared. I'm going to do this by making a table. I'm going to plot uh, 0, 1, and 2 and maybe a few negatives, a few positives, two negatives, and zero. I'll explain uh, in a few minutes um, why I'm choosing these points, but for right now, let's just plot and see what happens. So the first one I'm going to do is plug in, using my formula, I'm just going to plug in x is negative 2. And what do you get? Well, if you get negative 2 squared, oops, that's supposed to be a squared, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Plug in a negative 1, uh, is a 1, negative 1 times negative 1. Plugging in a 0. Plugging in a 1. And finally, plugging in a 2. All from this formula up there. And then I'm just going to plot these points. Negative 2 on the x we know is 4. Negative 1, we know, is 1. 0 is 0, that's the origin. 1, find this point right here, 1 is 1. And finally, the last one, 2, is 4. You can see you get this nice U shape. Add a few arrows. It goes on because if I plugged in 3, it'd be 9. Negative 3 would be a 9 as well. And it goes up. That is called a problem. By the way, this point right here is called the vertex. When plotting regular parabolas, it's always best to plot the vertex right in the middle. See that point right there? That was the vertex. And notice how I chose the vertex in the middle, two on the left and two on the right. There is a way, so what I'd like to do, say if my parabola is shifted, which is my next example, and there's a way to find that vertex using the vertex formula. So let's go ahead and do that. Example 2, let's graph y equals x squared minus 2x. The vertex is not going to be 0, 0 in this case. There is a formula for the vertex, and so let me scroll down. What is the vertex formula? The vertex formula is x equals negative b over 2a, where the a is the coefficient in front of the x squared, and the b is the coefficient in front of the x. The c, the constant, is not used in the vertex formula. So in this case, the a turns out to be 1. The b is the coefficient from the x, so that's negative 2. The coefficient in front of the x squared is negative 1. The c is 0, but we don't need the c. So if I use my formula, negative b over 2a, we get a negative negative 2 over 2 times 1. That's what the a value is. So that's 2 over 2, which is 1. So when I make my table, that's what I would like. Oops, a positive one. That's what I would like. Let's erase that. Can't erase that. There it is. That's what I would like in the middle. Now, if you notice above, what I did is I did a couple of points to the left of that, a couple of points to the right. So I'm going to do that. You can even just do one, couldn't you? Just as long as you know that middle point, we would just plot these three points. So I'm going to do maybe zero and two. That would work. If you want to do negative 1 and 3 as well, that would be fine as well. We know this is the middle one, is the vertex. So again, I'm just going to plug in those points, plugging in 0 into my original. So let me rewrite my equation and plug it in 0. I get uh, 0. Plug in a 1. I get a 1 squared minus 2 times 1, which is a 1 minus 2, which is a negative 1. And then finally, plugging in x equals 2 into my formula, 
you get 4 minus 4, which is 0 as well. Plotting those three points, um, I get 0, 0. The vertex, which is 1, negative 1. And 2, 0. 2, 0, 1, negative 1, and 0, 0. And you can see that U shape. And that is example two. You can see the vertex. By the way, if they ever ask you for the axis of symmetry, if you notice, the reason that the left and the right point are the same is because this is symmetric. Notice how one value away to the right of the vertex is the same as one value to the left of the vertex because it's like a mirror image. They call this the axis of symmetry. So now, if we go back to our first one, if I wanted to find my vertex, you can use that formula that we used on the second one. If you notice that the a, in this case, is the coefficient from the x squared is 1, and the b is 0, because there's no x term. So that's why the vertex was right negative 0, which is 0, over 2 times 1. So that is 0 over 2, which is just 0. That's why the vertex, the x-coordinate of the vertex, was 0. So let's try one more example, example 3. Okay, so here we're going to find a vertex. So we're using that same formula above, where the a is the coefficient in front of the x, which is a 1, and the b, there's no x term. This is not b. That is the c. That's the constant. There's no x term. If this said 9x, like in example 2, then it would have been the b, but now it's just minus 9. So the b in this case is 0. So again, as in example 1, if I use my formula, that's negative 0 over 2 times 1, which is 0. So that's going to be my middle point, which is my vertex. One to the left, one to the right. And if I plug in these values, uh, let's do zero first because it looks nice and easy. Y equals zero squared minus nine. That would be a negative nine. Plug in an A one, that would be one squared minus nine. One minus nine is negative eight. And I should have said a negative one. Whoops. Let's do that again. Not that it's going to matter because negative 1 squared is 1 and 1 minus 9 is still negative 8. Plug in an A1, 1 squared minus 9. That's what I did before. We get 1 minus 9, which is also negative 8. I better hurry. So negative 1 we know is down negative 8. 0 is down to, whoops, that's 6, sorry, negative 8. Let's scroll down a little bit. Whoops. 0 is negative 9. Okay, 0, that's a vertex. And 1 is also negative 8. And that would be my problem. This is just really a, right, a downward shift from the basic. The last thing I'm going to do is I am going to plot this on, so I'm going to go to our graph. I've actually took this from one of the homework questions. And I'm going to try, because like some people had a hard time using the tool. So I'm going to make this larger. You can click on this little, you can click here to make it enlarged as well and go to maximum, just to make it nice and big. And, uh, well, maybe not nice and big. Maybe medium would be better, so you can see everything that's going on. So when we want to do a parabola here, before we did lines, so now I want to choose a parabola. And our parabola, it goes up or down. And what I like to do is start with the vertex. So if you remember, let's go back to that. The vertex was 0, negative 9. So I'm going to go to 0, negative 9 and click. 
and then I'm just going to click on my next point. My next point was 0, 1, negative 8. So you can click on that. You just need two points. So let's go back again. 0, negative 9, I clicked on that first. Then I moved to 1, negative 8. I started with, I clicked on the graphing tool. I clicked on 0, negative 9, and then I moved my pin to 1, negative 8, and I released hit save and I can check my answer and that is how you use the graphing tool. Hope that helps!